Hi there. Great that you're here. Thanks for all being here to watch this webinar on nanomagnesium. Uh, as I'm Dutch, I need to switch back over to English. So if I say something funny, please excuse me. At least you will have a laugh. Uh, today we're going to talk about magnesium, what it does, uh, how much we actually need, the differences between the different kind of magnesiums, and of course the benefits of the nanomagnesium. So nanomagnesium, to sum up for people who don't know, uh, they are the smallest particles that you can get in a magnesium supplement. They're so small that if I take a hair and the diameter of that is 80,000 nanometers and uh, nanominerals contain particles of about one nanometer size. And therefore it has a very high energetic field. Uh, so it literally lifts you up a little bit. Uh, but the main um, yeah, reason that it's really special is that it, it will be absorbed in the soft tissue of the mouth like rapidly. So if you leave the mineral a little bit in your mouth for like 15 seconds to up to one minute, uh, all of the magnesium will be assimilated by the soft tissue into the bloodstream straight even to your brain because it can pass the, bra uh, the brain blood barrier. It therefore bypasses your digestion. Uh, so this will mean that it goes very fast. But also if you have any problems with digestion or heartburn, it doesn't matter because it bypasses it. So that's a huge benefit as well. Um, it's easy to take in because it's odorless, it's tasteless and it's colorless. Therefore you can also give it secretly <laughs> if you want to give some magnesium to your child or to a partner. Uh, and the main reason it works really, really fast. So nanomagnesium gives you wings like a dove. Why is that? Because magnesium in general is needed for relaxation of muscles and nerves. And for most magnesium products, it's very difficult to go straight into the nerves. Um, magnesium is also needed for release of energy. Without magnesium, there is no uh, there's not enough energy for the body. We will see later on how that especially works. Uh, but in the end, it gives you zen So you get nice and calm, but also energetic at the same time. So basically the same thing that you get from good yoga or a nice walk through nature. It will give you this zen uh, It says also intensifies because magnesium basically intensifies both the ability to relax uh, as well as to like uh, doing sports, uh, doing your basic work on a laptop, on a computer, because it gives you more focus, more energy, um, but at the same time it relaxes your nerves and, and your muscles. So it intensif intensifies the good qualities that you have. Uh, magnesium is your basic mineral as it is part of so many processes. Uh, that basically if you have somebody in front of you, either in your practice or in a shop, uh, and they have so many complaints, you don't know where to start, start with magnesium. It will always give you some benefits, some area or the other. Uh, to sum up a little bit, and we will tune in uh, more on that later, but magnesium uh, is part of m over 300 processes in enzymes, um, and the more the synthesis of proteins, DNA, the cell growth, protection, cell structures, your metabolism, you need it to release energy from carbohydrates, from proteins, from fats. Uh, it is a main part in communication between cells. Um, it regulates a lot of processes, uh, the hormones, and therefore blood pressure, heart rate, and therefore also magnesium will work on both high and low blood pressure because it helps to balance the body. Uh, and of course, the relaxation, as we just mentioned. So first, we're going to look at signs of shortage, which is a long list. Uh, dizziness, concentration loss. Everybody knows this. Well, maybe not the dizziness, but concentration loss. If you're behind your laptop for eight hours, like I was today, uh, you get a little bit stressed because you're trying to uh, translate <laughs> the presentation into a different language. Uh, I was lucky to have a bottle of nanomagnesium on my desk and it works rapidly, so that was good. Uh, fatigue, obviously because you need magnesium to release energy. 
palpitations of the heart um, because it's so important for muscles. So if you don't have enough magnesium, it can get irregulated. A retained fluid, that is because of the uh, influence it has on the hormones, but also because of the regulation of potassium, because most people know that when you hold fluids, um, you can give potassium, especially with warm water, uh, warm weather, that will work. But in the basic, you need magnesium for that. PMS, hormonal disbalances, uh, well, like I said, high or low blood pressure, heartburn, constipation. A lot of times you see with heartburn, it's very difficult to absorb the magnesium from your foods and therefore you get a shortage. Um, easily irritated, agitated is uh, most of the times a sign of a shortage of magnesium. Headaches, very familiar, very known. Migraines, they have different uh, sources obviously uh, lots of times it's also with the liver the gallbladder or the hormones uh, but my magnesium can release headaches and migraines especially nano magnesium uh, since it works so fast i've seen many many people with tension headaches that resolved their headache within five minutes sometimes up to like an hour which is still very fast if you compare it to a magnesium tablet uh, so that's a great instant relief. Same works like on cramps. Uh, you get an instant relief. So when you do a lot of sports or you just have cramps during the night, uh, trembling eyelids, the palpitations, and fatigue, especially in the brain. Uh, if you give magnesium, it will release the energy. And therefore, you can have more focus, more concentration, and you'll be like bright again without a cup of coffee or with a cup of coffee, whatever you prefer, of course. Uh, keep in mind that if you do a lot of coffee, your body needs extra magnesium. Um, you have to process that. So how does magnesium relax us? We need calcium for the tension, both for our bones, the muscles, and the nerves. So what, what happens is there is an impulse from the body and that means that calcium knows, hey, uh, some tension is uh, needed. So calcium ions, it's always the ion that does the active work, uh, will come into the cell and gives the tension. So if you want to do a push-up or you want to use your muscles, calcium is there to give the tension. What magnesium does is basically it pushes out the calcium ions and therefore the muscle or the nerve uh, can relax again. And so this is how it works in short. Uh, a deficiency of magnesium will therefore make sure that the muscle will stay in the contraction and therefore you get cramps or stiffness, uh, sometimes tremblings. Um, the, benefit, the benefit again of the nanomagnesium is that it transports directly into the nerves uh, because you absorb it via the soft tissue of the mouth and therefore it can work fast and therefore you have the instant relief. Also like with nervousness, pain, tensions, uh, and nanomagnesium, the nice thing about it is that you can not only swallow it and take it from the inside out, you can actually also adjust it topically. So because it's so small, the skin will absorb the teeny tiny particles like immediately and therefore you can have a pain relief within a minute. Um, how does it increase your energy levels? That's because all of our energy is basically stocked in ATP, adenosine triphosphate, if I pronounce it well in English. Uh, it is a compound that holds the energy. And the whole day long, uh, we release the energy, or our body releases the energy with help of magnesium. So of course we need other things, we need all minerals, we need B vitamins and vitamin C, uh, there's all kinds of nutri nutritional factors, but magnesium is the basic element here, as without magnesium you're not able to release the ATP, or the energy from the ATP. So this is sort of like a battery. Um, you need it for basically everything. Contraction, protein builds up, activity, the working of prostaglandins, who make sure that your uh, inflammatory actions are pressed down. 
Um, and what is very important, you need the magnesium ions. And that is another benefit of the nanomagnesium. It will release ions straight away because it does, does not need to be digested. You do not have to take the magnesium from the carrier, like a citrate or a bisglycinate or whatever kind of magnesium you have. It is already elemental. It is purified water with nanoparticles, magnesium. There is no binder, no compounds. It's not a salt. A salt is uh, a metal or a mineral attached to a non-metal. Uh, and therefore, you yeah, have a stable um, magnesium that you can put in a tablet or a powder, but the nano is elemental already. So it can go straight into the blood system and it releases ions right away. And it's the ions that actually do the work. Um, as I said, also, it can pass the brain blood barrier straight away. So therefore, it gives clarity, concentration, focus and uh, mental energy. How does it influence bones and hormones? Um, well, the calcium ensures the solidity. So you need that for tight structure um, so that, you, that your bone won't break too fast. But actually, you need also an amount of flexibility um, because also, even bones like other tissues need a certain amount of flexibility. Otherwise, they would break too fast. Uh, magnesium together with collagen and fibrils, make sure you have that flexibility of the bones. So collagen is very popular lately, not, not for nothing. It's like glue of the body uh, for both the bones, but also tissues. Your skin is for 70% made out of collagen. So that would be wise to take as well. And of course we need enough proteins uh, because without proteins, we can't do the building blocks. We don't have the fibrils that are very important for the flexibility of your bones. Magnesium is also needed for the conversion from um, calcidol to calcitriol. <laughs> Sometimes I'm looking for the right words. Uh, that basically means the vitamin D that you take from a jar uh, needs to be converted into the active form where your body can actually use it. And again, for that, magnesium is needed. Without magnesium, you won't see the active working of the vitamin D. Therefore, especially if you take high doses of vitamin D, which happens a lot lately, uh, if you don't take the magnesium or even a bit of calcium, you might get heart palpitations because of a lack of magnesium with the high doses of vitamin D. So it's very important that you uh, take a look at that and keep that in balance. Vitamin D on its own is required for absorption from calcium from the small intestine. So without vitamin D, you do not get the calcium from your food into the blood system. And uh, actually besides that, you need vitamin K to actually get the calcium into the bones. So it won't stay into your heart and veins where you can get um, calcification. Magnesium is also needed for that. So magnesium also makes sure that um, calcium will actually end up into the bones and will be uh, thrived away from your soft tissue, from the veins. Um, so it's a double function in that way. Vitamin D on its own is, of course, very, very important for our hormonal system, uh, for the immune system, also for the bones and feet. So they work together. Um, take them together. I would advise you to do that. Magnesium regulates a lot of hormones. Of course, also in that area, there's a lot of other factors needed. Uh, but magnesium really balances it out. Therefore, magnesium has a huge influence on lots of processes of the body because the hormones of course influence most of our systems most of the processes so therefore you can have a big variety of complaints um, like spasms thrombosis high blood pressure or low blood pressures inflammatory uh, even hypocalcemia because uh, the thyroid is in in a large way um, responsible for a good um, digestion processing of the calcium. So in that way, magnesium also um, helps to yeah, regulate, they, keeps the levels of the calcium uh, in, a right, in a right way. 
uh, but there's lots of other things of course like um, loss of mental if your uh, glands don't work really well uh, you get fatigue or burnout that's all has to do with hormones and therefore magnesium is a big plays a big role in that and therefore magnesium helps when you're totally lost it's too complicated uh, you don't know which area to go magnesium is always a good start um, probably you heard of the sodium potassium pump um, magnesium is again needed to keep the my membrane potential in the right order so constantly uh, sodium and potassium they will go in and out of the cell and because of that you get a certain energy level on the cell membrane and that is needed to be keep able to communicate between the different cells so all cells in the body constantly are communicating with each other uh, because they need to take in vitamins minerals they have to release uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, toxins, all kinds of stuff, fatty acids need to be built into your cell membrane. And to do that efficiently, that membrane potential needs to be regulated and updated. And so also for this process, we need magnesium. So basically in the end, it means uh, all metabolism processes are dependent on magnesium. The electrolyte balance. So the electrolytes are the minerals uh, that we lose fastest if we like sweat. Um, because, because of the sweating, we lose a lot of minerals, but the electrolytes are basically very important to keep our pH level in balance. And that's those are mainly magnesium, calcium, potassium. And they will make sure that our body does not acidify we don't want to acidify because too many acid uh, residues uh, will get stuck in the arteries, in your joints, and can give gout, arthritis, uh, uh, arthrosis, uh, all kinds of problems that we don't want to have. Cellulite, hair loss, uh, skin problems. So we need our minerals to keep the pH in balance. It's also important that we don't acidify because if we have too much acid in our body enzymes will get uh, disrupted so they don't work a lot very well anymore and also antioxidants will not be able to do their work properly and antioxidants of course we need to protect our cells and tissues and they basically make sure we don't age too fast uh, so there's stories that people use to get lots and lots older than we do now um, maybe that's because we had a lot of more antioxidants in the body and lots less acidifying foods. Um, and well, magnesium in that way is at least responsible or plays parts in about 300 processes. Uh, there are people who say that's four or five or even 600 uh, or more processes in the body. Um, so I think it's clear that magnesium is our basic mineral. Uh, we need it for basically everything. So um, other important functions, magnesium, because it relaxes us, it helps to dilating uh, the fasco, the, um, the veins, the hearts and veins. Um, it's regulating the blood pressure. Uh, both high or low blood pressure uh, will benefit from more magnesium. It also helps to lower elevated cholesterol levels. So it will help to um, get a high and low cholesterol uh, better in balance. Um, it helps to regulate insulin, which is a very important hormone to keep your blood sugar uh, stable. And if your blood sugar raises or gets low, you get fatigue, you get you get tremblings, uh, you want to eat sugar all the time, um, yeah, you basically don't feel fit, you have troubles uh, going to the gym, uh, and low blood sugar, um, especially when it goes up and down, uh, can increase the risk of getting diabetes. 
uh, and that also gives a lot of damage to the cells. So we want to stay away from that and keep our magnesium levels in balance. And a lack of magnesium together with an increased estrogen level, which usually happens just before women get uh, into their periods, in their monthly periods, um, then we get decreased dopamine levels. And this, girls, is why we reach for a lot of chocolate. Now, if you take some dark chocolates, you actually get some magnesium. So that's a good idea, probably, especially if it's raw. But if you go for the white or the, or the milk chocolates, you basically get a lot of sugars and fats. You're probably going to crave sh uh, chocolate even more. But a good dark piece of chocolate, nice and raw, uh, will actually help you. So it's a good idea. But it's good to know why you crave it. So food sources. Dark chocolates, obviously in the list, uh, but also green leafy vegetables is basically your main source of magnesium. So like spinach, um, oh, now I have to look for the English words. Rocket, rocket is a really good one, has a nice and nutty taste also. Actually, rocket is also very good for your um, stomach acid. Uh, so that might be a good idea as well. Uh, besides that, nuts, whole wheat products, so not the refined white flour products. And still a lot of people think that brown bread is whole wheat flour, but actually most of the time it's white flour with a bit of color. Uh, so keep that in mind. It really has to say whole wheat products, otherwise it's just a fake. Uh, peanuts are a nice source of magnesium, but not um, yeah, sufficient for everybody as it contains sort of uh, lectins that can damage um, your your gut. So for some, yes, for others, no. Shellfish, soybeans. Soybeans is also something questionable. Uh, if you have a biological one that is not being attacked with all kinds of chemicals, uh, then it could be a good source, but it's very difficult to, to get that. Um, so maybe milk products could be another source and also of course goat milk uh, can be uh, a nice source or like an almond milk um, yeah that could be a source of magnesium fact is that uh, the vegetables that are recommended to eat daily which is only 200 or 250 grams a day it's uh, in holland it's just recently been raised, raised from 200 to 250 milligrams. I'm not sure how much it is in England, but this is about the amount that is being advised. Uh, but actually only 2% or even less um, gets that level. So you're gonna see in a moment how little that actually is. Uh, but of course the food experts, uh, the way we used to eat, so the primal diets when we were still maybe living in a cave, um, is much more. So basically it would be good if you would at least eat like half a kilo, 500 grams of vegetables a day. It is very doable. Uh, you have to get used to it a little bit. You have to adjust your diet a little bit, but it is very doable. Um, but the main source of magnesium we by far don't reach in general uh, maybe for the viewers that we have it's a little bit different but the average person uh, doesn't eat enough vegetables and besides that the mineral content in the food drastically reduced well you have an idea uh, why that is uh, first have a look at how much vegetables we actually eat um, I found it shocking when I saw this. It's it's a it's a Dutch source, uh, but it's an institution from the government who looks at our food intake, and the average intake is about um, seventy five up to one hundred and forty milligrams a day. You see here a fist with some broccoli. This is actually the amount that the average average person eats a day. Uh, you could also say like uh, six little cherry uh, tomatoes or something in that area. Uh, I found it really shocking. And uh, the average teenager eats even half of this. 
um, and they need it most because they go through all these hormonal processes, the body is changing, um, and yeah, we need magnesium and vegetables for lots of reasons. So I would really uh, encourage you to stimulate your clients to eat more vegetables because this is crazy, of course. Uh, and it is doable. You have these little packages of carrots and radishes, uh, bell peppers, cucumber. If you eat some vegetables with every meal, you take an omelet with some vegetables or you take uh, during the lunch once or two uh, uh, sandwiches less and instead you eat vegetables, uh, you can actually make it. Uh, but it's I found it shocking and I don't know what it's like for you. Um, it does uh, make sense uh, why we get too little magnesium, but also our foods are impoverished uh, in a big way. Actually, in 1900, the average daily intake was about 500 milligrams, uh, whereas today it's only 200 milligrams a day. And that is not only because we eat too little vegetables, it's also that the vegetables we eat are much less rich in not only magnesium, but all minerals. Uh, but to have a look at magnesium here, uh, it's about 21% in America and 35% in England. Less magnesium in our vegetables and in cabbages that goes up to 84% less magnesium than what it was. Uh, maybe about 50 or 60 years ago. So that's that's a huge drop of magnesium, but also discounts for all minerals. So personally, I think that we actually are dependent on a good overall mineral product. There are several of those. Um, I'm a big fan of Okinawa uh, mineral powder, but there are uh, different mineral products, of course. Uh, on top of that, so we eat too little vegetables, our vegetables are depleted of magnesium and then we get actually increased excretion or increased needs uh, from, for example, diuretics that, uh, that also flush away a lot of magnesium. Alcohol, not only magnesium but alcohol also depletes you in potassium, B vitamins, zinc. Don't forget, zinc zinc is also really important for lots of processes, energy, buildup of proteins. Um, alcohol takes away a lot of that, so um, please keep your alcohol a little bit moderate, moderated, or take some extra minerals. Uh, contraceptive pills, so birth control, uh, lowers magnesium status. Gastric acids inhibitors, blocking the absorption of magnesium. Um, both from your food and from a supplement. This is, again, another reason why nanomagnesium can be uh, a good alternative because it doesn't need the stomach or the gut because it goes by the soft tissue of the mouth, of course. Processed foods uh, not only contain much less magnesium, they actually make sure you need more because normally the body is given the minerals it needs to digest it. So if you have a whole flour uh, product, it has the minerals and vitamins that it needs to digest it. Whereas you take that off, you take it away, your body needs minerals from another source. So if you do not get that from your foods, your body will deplete your bones, your skin, your hair and your tissues because it cannot live without minerals. Minerals are needed for the um, the communication between the cells to detoxify uh, and to take up your vitamins. In the meantime, I got a couple of questions because I didn't tell you, but I cannot see the question. So there is a colleague at the back. Uh, she is answering most of the questions, uh, but my colleague just brought in, uh, I think, one. So let me see what it says. A question about the cooperation of magnesium and hormone PMS complaints, excessive blood loss during menstruation. Is that also related to a magnesium deficiency? What is your experience? Um, could be because excessive blood loss could be by um, not having balanced hormones. But of course, every woman is different. 
Uh, so some woman has a release of lots of blood in the beginning and later on almost nothing. The other one is more spread it out. Uh, and one woman just loses more blood than the other. Um, but of course, minerals that um, affect your hormones will make sure you have the maximum balancing effect in your body. And when magnesium is obviously one of the minerals that we lack uh, usually, and most people lack magnesium more or less, uh, but it's definitely worthwhile to try it and see if it maybe, um, um, yeah, how do you say that, changes a little bit. Uh, there are other minerals and supplements that actually uh, rebalance the hormones from the pituitary glands, like platinum or indium. And uh, we're going to talk about that in another webinar. Uh, but if, yeah, if from the mother gland, the hormones don't work efficiently, then it's wise to get something on top of magnesium. Thank you for this question. Uh, I will answer some more questions later on, but I think most questions are answered by my colleague. Um, yeah, let's go on with the increased excretion. Uh, thank you, Kai, <laughs> my colleague, for bringing the question. Um, stress. Funnily enough, when we are stressed, we have tension on the muscles and the nerves. Uh, so we use up more magnesium and therefore it's wise to take some extra magnesium. The body somehow releases more magnesium when we are in stress. Up so far, I never got an answer why this happens. You should think the body has an explanation for that, as it normally it's very intelligent and uh, has a reason for every process. Uh, I didn't find a reason so far, but it's a fact that we do um, lose more magnesium when we're in stress situations and we need more to balance. Uh, so stress, sometimes people think only of stress uh, when they have lots of problems, they don't know how to get out of it. But of course, excessive exercise, high pressure on your work, even if you like your work. I mean, I love my work, but sometimes, yeah, you have a lot of stuff piling up. And that's also a form of stress where magnesium is a welcome mineral to keep your balance and get your muscles and your nerves relaxed again. Uh, and then, of course, when we sweat, we sweat. We lose minerals because we lose fluid and in that fluid are our electrolytes, most of our minerals. Uh, so sports, sauna, hot weather, uh, if you work in a hot environment like a kitchen, if you're a cook, uh, these kind of things that will burn up more of your minerals. And of course foods. So take caution with lots of sugar, alcohol, refined flour, chemicals, um, because chemicals need minerals to be adjusted to them to actually enable the body to get rid of the toxins. Uh, and acid, acidifying foods, they need the minerals also to uh, change the process around and get alkaline again. So in all these situations, we need more minerals and not less. Uh, so we have to get them from some source. We have a lot of hidden sugars. Uh, I'm sure you know this, but uh, the average person doesn't. And for example, if you buy uh, a jar of uh, sauce for to pour over your pasta um, in a supermarket, then usually it takes it contains about 12 lumps of sugar. Um, which is a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. And we know about the soda drinks. And, uh, and the Coca-Cola and all those kinds of stuff. But people use tend to forget that even in um, salty things, there is a lot of sugar. Also in a pizza or even in cheese and in bread, there is usually a lot of hidden sugars. So this is even besides the sugar that you add yourself to your coffee or your tea, um, we eat a lot of sugar. And uh, the adults, the average is about 60 grams. And children even more, about 75 grams a day of added uh, chemical sugar. Because 
uh, still people who think that sugar from an apple is the same as uh, uh, sugar that you put in your tea. It is not. If you eat an apple, it comes with the minerals, even if it's less minerals than it used to be. It comes with minerals, with enzymes, uh, with fibers that actually make sure that our blood sugar cannot raise like crazy and make sure that we can digest the sugar we need sugar it's it's a it's a source of energy uh, but we need to have it in a whole compound with all the other minerals vitamins uh, and fibers uh, to digest and process it uh, but it's something to look at um, what is also good to know it's not a funny fact it's it's uh, a little bit scary actually but most people eat overall white flour products so white rice white pasta white breads crackers cakes uh, well you can go on with the list actually going from whole wheat products and from brown rice or brown pasta to the refined white flour products and white rice you lose about 80 to 83% of magnesium. So that's basically most, most of it. So you are left with almost nothing uh, and therefore you need extra again. Your body will take it from your reserves. Uh, so from your skin, from your hair, from your nails and from your tissues and of course from the bones and the teeth. Um, we increase our needs up on top of that. Stress, big factor. We are over um, stimulated by lots of things. Uh, we need to do a lot. We have a long list of must do's. Uh, besides work, we have to go to the gym, we have to be social, uh, we have to be nice with our kids, have time, we need to go with our friends. Uh, you want to do an extra course, uh, well, there's lots of things that we think we must do and that gives a form of stress. Um, of course, telephones, microwaves, the Wi-Fi, the 5G network uh, gives our body a lot of stress. Um, sports, even though it's really good for us, we lose minerals, we put extra pressure. If you're in lots of fatigue or you're close to a burnout, I would not recommend you to go to a gym and do heavy workouts. Uh, it will ask more of your body. Go do some yoga, a long walk, maybe some bicycle uh, rides. Uh, but heavy sports are good for you, um, but only if you're in good condition and when you really like it, because that's also really important. Uh, medications, well, for instance, the birth control, but also lots of other medication. We're gonna see a list of that shortly. Uh, and of course, if you have cramping or stiffness, your body basically is telling you that you need extra medication. High sugar intake, headaches, concentration loss, hormonal complaints, HSP, so high sensitive persons, and uh, they use up more magnesium because they're more sensitive for stimulants. So therefore they have more pressure on the nerves and the muscles. So they will use up more magnesium. Uh, especially those kind of people are also very benefited by a nano magnesium because it goes straight into the muscles. Also they don't need to swallow a big tablet, which they usually find difficult. Uh, that also counts, of course, for children and elderly. So and this is also a situation that a nanomagnesium can actually um, be preferred on top uh, or instead of a magnesium salt. So then there is a long list of applications because we use up a lot of magnesium. We need it for all these things. So there is lots and lots of things. Uh, so it's a long list. Fatigue, vibrating muscles, well, I don't need to sum them all up. Uh, some are nice to tell because you don't think of it, like asthma, bronchitis, severe cough. Why? Uh, because you maybe would think of silver that kills the bacteria, viruses, zinc that kills the viruses. It's very good for bronchial problems. But if you do a lot of coughing, of course, you have a lot of tension on the muscles, on the bronchi. Um, so if you take some extra magnesium, you help to relax or you help to recover. So besides the other things you take, 
um, it might be that you take some pine or you take some eucalyptus oil to, to cleanse and to open up uh, the bronchi. Uh, don't forget about your magnesium. You need it to release the energy and to relax. Uh, PMS menopause, we talked about that. Um, temperature regulation, that is a thing you find. We, I saw lots of times that when people took some nanomagnesium, they actually said, I feel warmer, I feel warmth into my body. So if you're sensitive for cold, might be a nice idea. Uh, if you have a lot of problems with cold hands, cold feet, it can also be a lack of iron or you have a lack of B, uh, B vitamins, especially 6, 9, and 12, uh, that you need for your overall homeostasis uh, to regulate temperature, but magnesium plays a big role in that. Cholesterol level detoxification, it's often forgotten about, but we need minerals for that, and uh, magnesium is, uh, plays a big role in that. Um, yeah, the memory, the diabetes, bones and teeth. Um, yeah, we can go on, but this is uh, a long list. So when do you take nanomagnesium? That is, of course, the question. Well, you can take it always. It is always safe. And lots of times it has a bonus on a magnesium salt or it works better. Than a magnesium salt. I'm not saying that a magnesium salt is bad uh, or it's insufficient. I actually think that it's a good idea to combine nano mineral with a magnesium salt. And by a magnesium salt, I actually mean a bisglycinate or a citrate uh, or even an oxidate or any other form of magnesium. Because uh, actually, from our foods, we get both forms. If we chew our food well, nanoparticles will be released and will be taken up by the soft tissue. But also, bigger particles of magnesium will get to the stomach and will be wrapped in um, amino acids from the gut and then taken up. Or... Uh, they will form a compound with uh, an acid, so you get sort of a citrate. And actually, both forms are used by the body to take up magnesium. And that on its own, I think, is a good reason to take both. Also, it makes it a bit more economic, because nanomagnesium is a wonderful product, and I think sometimes it's really the only magnesium that actually will help you with the complaint that you have. Uh, but because the process is uh, quite expensive, also the product is a little bit less economic. So in that way, it can also be a good idea to use them both. So you keep it nice and economic, uh, but you benefit from both. So you use your minerals, your magnesium salt for your big muscles for daily use, and you use the nano on top to release a headache or a migraine, to go deep into the tissues, in the nerves. If you have a lower back pain, uh, you have palpitation, trembling eyelids, you wanted to use work instantly, uh, like when you wake up during the night and you can't wait an hour for your magnesium tablet to be absorbed and processed by the body, you want it instantly, you take some uh, nanomagnesium so you can combine uh, and of course for lots and lots of things uh, again it works fast often direct uh, it passes the blood brain barrier and it goes deep into the tissue so these are things that you want to um, recall when you think to yourself do I need uh, a nano or do I need a magnesium salt or do I need both Sometimes I have people, I have like runners, athletes that tell me that only the nanomagnesium will get rid of their cramps and not any magnesium salts helped for that. Uh, but I also get a lot of people actually benefit and really like the combination. Uh, but sometimes, yeah, anxiety, panic attacks, you want it to work fast and then uh, nanomagnesium really, really benefits and is 
a big bonus up and, uh, above assault. Uh, so yeah, I think <laughs> I, me I mentioned most of these, uh, but we go over it again a little bit. So it, it is actually the fastest working magnesium supplement. There is not any salt that can, can compete with Nanomag. It works the fastest and it's also the most pure magnesium product uh, as far as I know, uh, worldwide, I've never seen any other product that works so fast and is so pure because it's magnesium and purified water, and that's it. It's odorless, it's colorless, it's tasteless. Sometimes you have liquid magnesiums, but it's still a compound, it's still salt, but then smaller, so it's like an ionic uh, magnesium product. Uh, and that is still bitter, salty tasting because it's the compound. Whereas you have the elementary magnesium, you do not taste it. Also because it is so small. So it bypasses digestion, goes through the blame broads, it penetrates deep into the tissues. Uh, so it's like a PMS, it gives a lot of cramping. Uh, the nanomagnesium will actually get to the parts that you need it. Uh, it's 100% pure, 100% bioavailable, therefore you also need much and much less. So it's very close to nature's own uh, giving of magnesium, because in our foods we usually don't get this enormous amounts of magnesiums. Uh, but in a pill usually we get a lot, because you lose a lot, uh, uh, actually from a pill what you in the end keep is between about four and 22 percent which is not too much uh, whereas a nanomagnesium you will absorb everything there is in there so you need much less so therefore it has a different different working it's a different kind of magnesium you can't compare it to a normal salt in every way but of course it has an overlap a nice fact all nanominerals, so that, that means all teeny tiny minerals um, that are basically solved in water and have ion release, contribute to the cleanup of dead, damaged, and deceased cells. All nanominerals do this. Uh, so that's good to know and very handy because all day long, of course, cells are getting damaged. Uh, die off and our body needs to get rid of it. Especially zinc and silver are good in this, uh, but all minerals, all minerals contribute to this. Now we also have a couple of interactions, of course. Um, so let me start with the medications. Antibiotics, it disrupts the whole body, it disrupt, disrupts the mitochondrial functions, it kills off the bad bacteria, but also the good ones. Uh, your body needs to cleanse it out, and therefore we use a lot of extra magnesium. Of course, um, well, we actually recommend to take silver instead of uh, um, regular antibiotics because it just works just as fine, um, and even broader, but that's a different subject. Um, and you need a good probiotics after your antibiotics, but you also use up much more magnesium. Bisphosphonates. Uh, they actually are given when people have osteoporosis. They make sure the bone structure keeps nice and firm, uh, but it does use up magnesium, whereas you actually need magnesium to have strong and firm bones and flexible bones and to get calcium into the bones. So this is a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, chlorpromazine uh, and digoxin. Um, those are used with uh, psychiatric problems and also for heart um, irregular um, yeah, palpitations. So with those medicines, you also need to make sure you get extra magnesium. Thyroid hormone also uses up more magnesium. Magnesium is anyway very important for a proper thyroid function and the thyroid again, is uh, very important for a good calcification in the body or a good calcium uh, balance uptake. So they go very uh, good together. 
then magnesium can strengthen the action of muscle relaxants. Um, diazepam, baclofen, I'm not sure if you use the same terms in Holland. These are very known products that lots of people get when they uh, have lots of tensions, they are very, uh, have lots of stress, anxiety problems, they've been giving medications. Uh, to relax the muscles, whereas usually they just have a lack of magnesium. But if they take these medications, they don't want to get off. You certainly, uh, you cannot just um, advise somebody to just quit that, of course. Um, but keep in mind, you use you use up extra magnesium and your body needed it in the first place anyway. But it's a good thing if you want to use a natural muscle relaxant. Uh, besides magnesium, valerian does the trick. And if you have a good biological, uh, preferably freeze-dried valerian, it works very well. And the combination is a really, really nice uh, combo. And uh, lots of people that I've had with uh, especially sleeping problems, they go really well on a combination of valeria, valerian and some magnesium. You both fall to sleep faster, but also you have less wake-ups during the night. Um, magnesium can reduce the efficacy of medicines because it detoxifies. So keep two hours interval, don't take your magnesium with your medication, uh, because if you're dependent on your medication, you don't want to um, have a result that it works less well, so then take your magnesium later on. Um, magnesium can reduce the need for oral anti-diabetics because it improves the glymic, uh, glycemic control. So if you're having some blood sugar problems and you're not yet uh, taking um, diabetes medicine, you can actually improve your blood sugar a lot by taking magnesium. Maybe you can prevent of getting to diabetes or getting medication for that. But if you do the medication and you give magnesium, beware that you might need a little bit less, which is a good thing, but you have to, um, yeah, how do I, ooh, I can't find the right word for that, but you understand what I mean. Um, magnesium salts give a chance of diarrhea. Nanomagnesium does not. I've never seen anyone uh, getting diarrhea from, from magnesium. What can happen, and this is good to know, if somebody is really deficient in magnesium and you take nanomagnesium and you take uh, a big dosage, like 30 or 60 milliliters, that's one or two shot glasses, uh, because it goes straight into the muscles and straight into the nerves, if you have a lot of tension, your body suddenly gets uh, the chance to relax. So you can get very tired uh, or weak from nanomagnesium. This will only happen the first or maybe the first two times, but it is good to know. If that happens, you just know you had a really big shortage of magnesiums, of magnesium. Uh, and people need to be aware. It doesn't happen a lot. Most people just feel um, they're uplifted. Uh, but when it does, you know why. And you will find that after the third or the fourth time, you get that uplifting effect. This might also be a good moment where you actually uh, combine a magnesium salt with a nanomagnesium, because obviously you need a lot and you want to refill. And you can do that with a combination uh, really, really well. Um, also take caution with kidney problems. That usually counts for magnesium tablets. If you have insufficient kidneys, they're not able to release the magnesium, then you're gonna get a magnesium buildup. You don't want that. Uh, but with nano, we basically don't see this problem as it is um, assimilated from the soft tissue. So keep it in the mouth for a while and actually you could have a magnesium shortage with uh, kidney insufficiency uh, and then nanomagnesium is a really good uh, solution. It can also um, be something to look, have caution with if you have a slow heart rate. Because magnesium relaxes the muscles. So if you have a very slow heart rate, 
could actually mean that you lack magnesium. But then, especially with nanomagnesium, you have to be careful because it goes straight into the muscle. So in that case, you want to start with a couple of drops or you choose a magnesium salt. Uh, so this is maybe the only case that you really have to be a little bit careful with nanomagnesium if you have a really slow heart rate. Uh, yeah, so these are the interactions. When do you think of nano? Um, what I usually do is when it's a new product for you and you need to get used uh, to use it, uh, then it's an interesting idea to make a little list for yourself where you think you benefit the most or your clients benefit the most from the nanomagnesium. So I personally think of nanomagnesium uh, very fast with a headache or a migraine, anxiety attacks, uh, lower back pain. These are things that it just takes lots more time to get a result with a tablet salt uh, or a mag magnesium salt or a tablet or a powder even. Uh, and you get fast results with a nano magnesium. But of course, everybody has his own kinds of problems uh, in its practice or in the shop. But it can be very handy if you start with a couple of these focus points, like three, four or five, and you put them on your desk or on the screen of the till. Uh, so you actually think of the nanomagnesium. And in that way, you get experience and you start to get used to yeah, the workings, the efficacy of the nanomagnesium. Um, so I find for me that works, that worked when I started to work with nanomagnesium and also for shops and, and therapists that that is a good way to start because usually yeah, you're so um, trapped in a certain way of thinking and, and products that you like that when this new great product comes in, uh, you tend to forget sometimes. So that is a tip to, uh, to get used and also to keep it... Um, to keep a nice overview so that you don't get lost in all the possibilities. Uh, but that's up to you, of course. Um, I want to look at you on to recommendation of magnesium, because this is also a question that we get, of course. Uh, yeah, how do you compare it to a tablet? How much do we actually need? So what is average, uh, like um, the daily uh, recommended dosage is five milligrams per kilo of body weight. So when you weigh about 70 kilos, uh, advised is about 350 milligrams. Um, if we take that, we take about 200 milligrams of magnesium from our daily foods, our nutrition, then we need about 150 milligrams extra from a supplement. This varies, of course, a lot from person to person. Uh, in practice, you usually see that people need a little bit more because we are so oversatisfied with all this information that we get from everywhere and all the loads that we carry on our shoulders. But you could more or less, it is a different product, but you could more or less say that about one cup of nanomagnesium, that is like 30 milliliters or three tablespoons, is about one tablet of a good assimilated uh, magnesium product. So like a citrate or a bisglycinate, about 150 milligrams. So what you can do is either take daily one cup of magnesium or maybe half a cup and you combine it, combine it with one tablet. And of course, if you do a lot of sports or you have a stressful situation or a period, you can increase your magnesium, whereas at other certain moments, maybe you lower it a little bit. But when you feel tension or stress or fatigue or mental loss of focus, uh, you can always increase your magnesium. And uh, yeah, again, nanomagnesium helps instantly. So you can, you, can, you can play a little with it. When you feel like you need a little bit more, you take a little bit more. Uh, used together with a magnesium salt, I think I've answered that question already, so the answer is yes, but from person to person, look what works best. 
uh, you can dosage up the average dose is about 30 mils some people benefit from 10 milliliters or even sometimes i have people that use only a couple of drops i had a lady that said uh, that she took 10 drops every day before sleeping and she didn't have any nightmares anymore uh, and she slept wonderfully well and she said 10 drops for me is enough so there you go yeah every person is different whereas other people say i have a lot of stress i have cramping, i have anxiety i take 60 or 90 milliliter a couple of days when i need it and that is the amount that i need um so to sum up a little bit average 10 to 30 mil a day and if you have an emergency you feel terribly stressed uh like i was today when i translated and i thought oh it takes a little bit more time than i thought uh i took about 90 milliliters of nanomagnesium which worked for me luckily uh children approximately 10 to 20 mil a day but if you have very sensitive children or very young still start out with a couple of drops or a teaspoon see what happens if you don't see any effect give a little bit more but you, often you will see that children react very fast um, animals add a few sprays there are quite a lot of animals that are stressed just recently i walked into uh, a lady with a dog that dog came from spain and was abused and you could see that it wanted to be cuddled so much but at the same time was looking like is this safe is this safe and you will see that those animals will benefit from some nanomagnesium you just pour a little bit in their water and they will do relax uh, so you, you can use it both in and externally there is a spray it's called sos spray so emergency spray uh, you can spray it three to five times daily, about two times on your sore spot. I had a hairdresser that had an injury in his shoulder. He told me he felt a relief within a minute. We had people with injuries in their knees that told us they felt a relief within a day. Uh, so sore muscles, but even um, when you have joint problems, the magnesium can work efficiently as a spray. Usually you advise to do it both internally and externally, so you have double effect. The spray, you can also spray directly in the mouth. It's the same product. It's just handy to spray on the mouth, uh, to spray on the skin, but also when you carry it in your purse, uh, in your briefcase, you can use it throughout the day when you need a bit of relief. Then we also have a little bit of Dutch in here. Uh, I tried to translate it, but somehow the computer wouldn't translate this sentence. So you have, uh, I tell you, keep it a minute in the mond, <laughs> which means keep it like one minute in the mouth. Uh, a little bit less is okay, but if you tell your patients to keep it 15 seconds in the mouth, they will swallow it right away. If you tell them to keep it in the mouth for one minute, they actually keep it in the mouth for 15 seconds. And that is the minimum you need to get released and uh, get taken up via the soft tissue. Um, so we go a little bit over time, but we're almost there. I hope you're still awake and have enough magnesium to keep the focus there. Uh, sum up the SOS spray, so the emergency spray. Uh, both in the mouth into the skin it works rapidly you might be um, you might know the actual there is a magnesium so-called oil it is not an oil it is a chloride so it is a compound it's magnesium salt it feels oily on the skin uh, but the it does work but the negative side is it gives stains it can hurt it can actually stain or tickle uh, and it sticks so it's not really nice with clothes so i do not want to um, uh, be negative about a different product uh, but it is a fact that the nanomagnesium does not stain it does not hurt it does not stick so it's very easy to use and it's also very profitable because uh, the first bottle is about 22 mm, euros how much 
pound is that i'm not sure but you'll figure it out uh, but the refill is so much cheaper because the bigger bottles are um, much cheaper in comparing so it's actually very profitable uh, so that is on the uh, emergency spray so i will probably um repeat myself a little bit here but to sum up some of the usbs are fastest working magnesium product very refined highly energetic you will see that people that are sensitive react very well on this product because it's so close to their own energy levels uh, it works different from a salt like a citrate or a bisglycinate so it's really a different product you can also almost see it like a homeopathy but it's not it holds somewhere in the middle uh, it has this homeopathic effect because it actually does stimulate the body to work with magnesium and take it up faster uh, but it actually contains magnesium so it's not like you can't find the magnesium in there anymore it has the energy but also the actual amount uh, and again the combination can be bliss bliss point is that point where you can't get enough of it and it works marvelous uh, like that perfect chocolate cookie that you can't get enough of uh, yeah the combination again can be bliss use focus points like headache and migraine depression concentration anxiety panic heart palpitations nightly awakenings nervousness make a little list for yourself start working by that and you will see that you will increase the amount of times that you will actually reach for a nanomagnesium. Try it yourself, you can see what the effect is. And really keep in mind, it usually works within 10 minutes. Very, very fast, people notice a result. Um, more of the USBs, 100% pure, tastes like water. It actually has been test doping free. It doesn't carry the etiquette for that because when you want to do that, you have to test every batch, which is at this point still uh, too difficult for us, but might be in the future. But we had it test open free. We have a certificate of that if you like to see that. Uh, so it is actually safe and good to use for top athletes as well. Bypasses digestions, uh, so no problems with heartburn. Passes playing blood barrier again, so very fast reaction. Easy for children, elderly, and people who have difficulties with swallowing tablets or don't like the taste of uh, an ionic um, magnesium liquid. Can be given, therefore, secretly, uh, as I have lots of moms who want to give it to their child. We have lots of children who like it, who are like, give me the magical water, they call it, because they, they really notice uh, they get more quiet, more calm, uh, they have better learning abilities. But of course, you always also have children who don't want to try anything, or maybe even a husband. <laughs> it's something that I hear a lot, so you can give it secretly. Uh, I did it with my father-in-law once when he had a severe cough. And he didn't want to try anything. Uh, so I gave him some magnesium in the water. And that night he didn't cough. It was very noticeable. Um, so yeah, that might be an idea. Uh, a little fact. Less than 10% of children between 5 and 18 take in enough minerals. And um, we're going to give you, we're going to mail you after this. Uh, presentation with some uh, extra information you can see it back you can watch this webinar back uh, it might be nice if I give you a little overview of that because actually it's dramatically decreased um, children get an average of maybe seven percent of the amount of minerals that they actually need so besides magnesium I would highly recommend you to give them a really good overall mineral product like Okinawa. We're going to talk about it in a different webinar. Um, maybe Alka Greens or another green product, but minerals are um, so important. And I would really from the heart 
advise you to recommend and give those. Um, to go over the last two or three slides, because I don't want to leave out children. Uh, they really bad found, uh, benefit from magnesium. Many children have magnesium deficiency. Uh, so many times medication is given with a ADHD, ADD, um, compulsive disorders, anxiety, fatigue, irritable um, or agitated situations, concentration loss, sleeping problems, nightmares, hyperactivity or being very slow, uh, difficulties with following up instructions, most of the times they actually need a bit of more magnesium. I got another question and I'm going to answer that in a moment. What is striking? There was a French, French pediatrician, uh, Marianne moussen Basque. She investigated uh, and treated many children with under more ADHD, autism, and ADD. By the way, I do not want to leave out that most people with this disorders also lack zinc. So don't forget to look at zinc as well. Uh, there is a nano zinc, by the way, and you can combine them. I usually combine them. Um, but the agreement that she found was that all of those children lacked a huge amount of magnesium. And here we have a slide that actually shows side effects of metal fendidate, which is, uh, in other words, Ritalin or an equivalent of that. It's observed in over 230 children. And what you see is that lots and lots of these children have terrible fatigue, um, bounce effect, headaches. Uh, there is even 6% suffering from suicidal attacks. And 6% might not look that much. But if you look at the group of 230 children, that's only a small group of children that actually get Ritalin. It's 14 children out of this group that uh, didn't attempt to suicide which makes me very sad. And um, this doctor in particular uh, says that she works a lot with magnesium and that it helps so very well and that you can prevent your children from Ritalin. I'm not saying it's never a good idea. I know that there are children who actually benefit from Ritalin or an equivalent, but by far it is not always needed and you can do so many things with magnesium and other minerals. I personally think that every disorder of the body starts with a deficit of some nutritional fact somewhere. And of course, we need to look at food, exercise, meditation, relaxation, good conversations, especially with your children. Um, but most of these things, bad foods, a lack of exercise, lots of stress, um, doing things that you don't like or don't want. They use up more of the minerals and vitamins that we have. And uh, therefore you will find that eating well and supplement with some extra nutrition uh, will always give you a benefit. And it's not the only thing that we need to do, but it is, in my opinion and in my experience, something that is really worthwhile and one of the big pillars. Um, also, one of the last one I want to mention from this slide, uh, that it was found almost 50% uh, suffered from anorexic um, disorder. So if the disorder comes from using Ritalin or anorexic people are given Ritalin because of other symptoms they have, uh, either way, it's not the right way. Um, but since we have lots and lots of special girls, but especially girls suffering from eating disorders, uh, this is really a thing to look at.
So the very last one, um, and this is a site uh, of Dr. Musan Bosk that I did not want to keep from you. Why should you treat children with metal phenidates, i.e. Ritalin, Concerta, or any other equivalent, if they actually need magnesium? Give them magnesium instead. Uh, it's not only my advice, it's an advice of lots of health practitioners. The benefits of Nanomag are, it's easy to give, you can easily, <laughs> even give it secretly. It works quickly and both physically and mentally. And you can combine it with a magnesium salt for, well, basically the bliss effect. Um, there is a question that I'm going to answer, two questions. Do you know if it is safe to give some magnesium to my cat? He is already getting silver and gold, and I see that he's benefiting from that. Yes, it is. Probably I answered your question in the meantime. Yes, nanomagnesium is very good to give to your pets. Uh, it will give them the relaxions, uh, the relax uh, effect that they need, just as we need it as well. Is it safe to be used during pregnancy? Very. Nanominerals are actually much closer to nature because it is a much lower dose and it's very easy to process. Uh, and therefore it's always safe, especially magnesium, which is such a safe mineral already. Uh, but definitely the nanomag is safe to give during pregnancy and uh, women can benefit from that very well. So, I think, um, as we don't have a lot of questions, either my story was very clear or my colleague answered all the questions very well. I want to thank you for your attention. I hope this gave you extra insights, gave you a more clear idea on, well, what magnesium actually is and does. Uh, how important it is, the difference between magnesium salts and the nanomagnesium. We will send you the link, you can watch it back, and also there's going to be a mail address where you can actually address your questions if questions come up. Uh, so thank you very much. We're going to give more webinars, um, the ones that we have um, on stock are going to be on platinum, which is an amazing mineral for getting your different brain parts connecting together and actually um, rebalance your hormonal system. I'm going to talk about indium, uh, I'm going to talk about zinc, and uh, well, many more to come. Hope to see you soon. Thank you again for your attention, and I wish you a pleasant rest of the evening. Thank you.